Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back in another video from Annie News, and today we are checking out Mashoku Tensei's Magic System and Power Rankings Explained. I like that he's done this because he did his whole video on what Mashoku Tensei is, and he mentioned maybe he was going to do a cook content series, and I was waiting for that, and he didn't do it. But now I got a video on it, so I'm really intrigued. Let's just see what he has to say, shall we? Tensei is a story that shines Yo. with its immense level of It's so good. If you've never but watched that, it, check it out. Very difficult anime to adapt. Yeah. While I would normally try to do a cut content for every episode, certain circumstances have made that a little bit difficult to do until the beginning of part two. Right. So instead I'll be making a few of these. Oh, okay, interesting. So if he, mm, if he starts doing that, I'll check that out. My god. But unfortunately glossed over due to the amount of exposition required to explain them. Right, there's a lot so going on. let's begin this further free Mushoku Tensei Explained series mm. by taking a look at how exactly magic works in this new world. Please, place. come on, let's it's so started. sick. As we know from episode one, there were five books to be found in the Grey Rat House. Mm -hmm. Two fictional stories of fantasy, one guide to the various countries of the world, another that details There's a lot of law going on. Region, and finally the textbook of magic. Mm -hmm. This book was basically a wizard's manual that outlined how to cast offensive spells between the difficulty of beginner to advanced. Yes. While specific spells did constitute a lot of the content, there was also quite a bit pertaining to the fundamentals. Hmm. The first of which dictated the three main types of magic. Right, which are... There's attack magic for combat, healing right. magic for treating injuries, mm -hmm. and summoning magic to well. Summon. summon. Yeah, makes well, sense. Well, that much is stuff we already know. Both attack and healing magic are further divided into what's known as school. Oh. Schools being the term for the different subtypes of magic in each Damn! Hello, when I use this. Uh. Attack magic is split into the four main schools of earth, wind, fire, and water, each allowing for the generation the and elements. manipulation of that specific element. Right. Similar to that, healing magic is also further divided into four different schools as well. Damn. There's healing for treating injuries. Detoxification for purging poisons and disease. Okay. Protection to bolster the caster's defenses or create sturdy barriers. Cool. And finally, Divine Strike, which is more of a situational type. Hmm. What I mean is that spells in this category were typically only effective at doing damage against ghost-type monsters or demons. Ooh. Because of this, not many We're using Overlord a lot here because... Okay. They didn't even teach this magic at any of the universities. Love it. So, while it's not something that Rudy really needed to be concerned about right now, it did confirm that supernatural beings such as ghosts do exist. They're out there. Anyway, so, with that being the general divisions of attack and healing magic. There we go. You're probably wondering if there's anything for summoning magic. Mm -hmm. Well, while there aren't any schools like how there are with the other two, summoning does come in two different types. Ooh. Fiends, which are basically a form of monster that has evolved. Oh, Lord, so good. Oh, my God. Spirits, which I are miss it. Intelligent is called forth to possess an artificial body. Mm. The thing about summoning, though, is that it's a lot more complex than simply creating a fireball or treating a wound. Magic of this caliber can't simply be casted via an incantation. Right. Instead, many summoners have to rely on a magic circle. Which brings us now to the two methods in which magic incantation, is casted. Incantation, magic circles. While right. the initial concept for incantations and magic circles does start out rather elementary, the theory of it is constantly evolving the more Rudy learns about it. Like, yeah, it's Especially like, when it comes to the act of reciting an The thing is, like, you need to say see, these things, and he's like, I don't have to, to be the but it's like... Mechanism for casting yeah. Magic. Reason being that the incantations of old typically took at least one to two minutes to recite. Right. So, it was actually much faster to inscribe the mystic patterns of a magic circle than go from there. Right, okay. The so instead of saying everything, it's like, put it down. figured out how to shorten them. They had determined that the simplest of incantations could be reduced to around five seconds. Right. Making them much more suited for attack magic than any known method before. That's cool. It's a technique that later became known as truncated spellcasting. Truncated spellcasting. Now, even though the caster does still have to recite a predetermined set of words, because the cast time is so significantly reduced, the number of ways in which it could be used far exceeded that of any of the other methods. Right. Thus making it the ideal standard for casting magic. Seems it. Well, if it takes five seconds to put something out, then yeah. Ooh. This is by far the most efficient and effective mm. method, but it's also the most rare to do, likely due to the level of understanding of the fundamentals required. As I say, like it. he's the only one that seems to. He doesn't to do need it. to rely on an incantation or magic circle. Mm. 
Instead, he can just use himself as the medium to manipulate the Yes. Mana. Once he's known the incantation, he can though. He his mind to manipulate mana into the form he wants. Hmm. As overpowered as that sounds. The Does process seem itself OP. isn't any different. The steps for Rudy to manipulate mana into magic are the same as any other method. Hmm. It's just that everything's being done in his head instead of through a fixed medium like words or patterns. Yeah, like, he's not kind of like saying it. Does it in oh, she's as for stupid. <laughs> First was to imagine the shape of the spell. There would then be a short window of time after where the caster could add more mana. I like that he has to do it originally, and then, then it's like, yeah, I can do it now. It's not like he can just, just like do it straight off the bat. Them to determine the range at which they wanted to travel. Once all of that was done, the only thing left to do after was to simply release. Yeah. So the basic flow was pretty much spell genesis, determination of size, mm -hmm. determination of speed, and then activation. Right. All of which were either given in the words of the incantation or described into the of the magic circle. For those who can do silent casting, though, this entire process was simply done in their heads. Hmm. Not only reducing the cast time by more than a few seconds, but also granting a significantly increased level Whoa, of Whoa, look at that one. The fact that the whole spell could be modified all in their head made it that much more versatile. So, it's by far one of the most high-level techniques currently at Rudy's disposal. While he was practicing it, Another significant advantage that came with it was the ability to use combined magic even faster. This was the term used to describe when spells from different schools were cast in quick succession. Right. Resulting in a combination of individual elemental spells to create a completely new one. For example, by casting Waterfall, Heat Island, and Icicle Field together, the end result would be a blanket of mist. Ooh. So, there were numerous combinations Sick. in which the most basic of attack magic could be used together. The only thing limiting the caster's ability to use it was their understanding of the elements. Yeah, they need that, to know the what they're mana actually, their like, you know, Since using magic them. is basically the manipulation of mana, it makes sense that any sort of spell requires mana in order to be cast. As for where that mana comes from, though, well, it comes directly from the body of the person casting it. Mm -hmm. You see, every living being in the world of Mushoku Tensei has some finite amount of mana residing in their body. Yes. There is, of course, a little bit more to it than just that, but for now, that's pretty much all you need to know. That's the basics. <laughs> now that you know the fundamentals... The basics, course, understanding There's one it. last thing that we need to talk about, and that's the classification of ranks. Oh. The division of spells by their level of difficulty. Divine slash god, jeez. When it comes to magic, a spell's difficulty is typically determined by the amount of mana required to cast it. So, something like a water ball would be a beginner spell. Mm -hmm. Then, the more you start to manipulate the mana associated with it, the more complex the spell becomes, and yes. as a result, the rank of it gets higher. Makes sense. What this means is that a slightly more complex version of Water Ball, like, say, Water Cannon, would be at the intermediate level. Mm -hmm. Or Roxy's Earth Fortress would be at the advanced level. Yeah. When we get to the same level, though, that's when we start to get into the area of things like weather manipulation. They're typically large-scale spells that involve hefty amounts of mana. Now, each rank after this proceeds to build Kingly the Imperial Divine. Not only becoming more powerful and effective than the previous level, but also increasing their area of effect as well. Eventually getting to the point where a mage at the Divine level would be capable of affecting things at a continental scale. Boom. So, this would of course make them one of the most powerful beings in the world. That's why the title given to them would be... Overlord, so sick. <laughs> for a bit more context on the scale that these ranks work by. Let's use the novel's example of healing magic. Beginner level healers would only be capable of closing up simple wounds. Right. But those at the Imperial level are said can to be able heal to trees and stuff. Yeah, we have seen it. Yeah, that's cool. Beginner detoxifying magic can purge minor poisons or light diseases. So we're using shield hero now as well. Cool. Antidotes. Once again, though, a big part of a person's proficiency in a specific school all comes down to their understanding of it. Because Rudy doesn't fully understand how flesh wounds or physical injuries are healed. He isn't able to cast that type of healing magic without an incantation. Right. But if he did somehow possess a doctor's level of knowledge, then any sort of healing would be especially simple for him. It would just be That's knowledge. That's why he could be at the right, advanced okay. or saint level in all the attack schools, but still only be at the intermediate or beginner in the healing schools. Anyway, once a magician has proven to be capable of casting a spell in a specific school and at a specific rank, they'll then be granted a title in accordance with that. If we use Roxy as an example, her proficiency with water magic has resulted mm -hmm. in her being given the title of Water Saint. Right. So, with Rudy being able to cast the same level water magic as well, he too would also be referred to as a Water Saint. Water Saint, right, yeah. But if he ever became able to use Imperial magic in, let's say, Fire, fire. then he would also gain the title of Fire, fire Saint. Emperor. Oh, Fire that, Emperor, however, right. That, however, was extremely difficult and very rare to do. 
Hmm. In fact, it was considered rare to even find a magician at the advanced level. That's not to say that magicians themselves were rare, though. It's just that finding ones that were capable ones. Just right. According to Roxy, the odds of finding a capable magician was about 1 in 400. Ooh. Then only 1 in 100 of those capable magicians would ever be able to reach the advanced level. Damn. So that meant the actual one in odds 40, of finding an advanced Jesus, magician that's crazy. was about 1 in 40,000. Given how low that number is, you can only imagine how rare it is to find magicians at any of the levels above advanced. Yeah, that's mad. Let alone like, ones that like, are capable of look at someone that doesn't have to do his cantations so and that. So that just goes Whoa. to show how skilled of a magician he already is. Yeah. But the more specific details that's of his training madness. is going to be for another video. Ooh. Perhaps maybe even the next one. But anyway, that's pretty much the basics regarding Yo. magic and potential. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about this great Isabel Love it. I love the anime, love and the series, love, love loving like this, then learning sure stuff. The comments and leave a like. Yo. I do still have to keep up with the weekly ReZero videos, but I don't mind trying to commit to a few more of these. But yeah, as always, thank do you it. so much That's for watching, fine. and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, until next time. Ciao. Ciao. Sick. Hey. <sighs> If there isn't much cut content to cover, then I don't blame him for not doing the cut content series. I was hoping he would, but it's fine. But, uh, love it. Love his giving hints, like he's saying, you know, I guess at some point he will, so that's fine. But until then, thank you guys very much for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe, and already leave comments down below. Let me know I should watch the Gusty Future videos. And I'll see you guys. See you guys next time. Bye.